50 games! I have beaten 50 whole games! How good am I? I use the Gigo. I don't even care! And it's only taken... 7 years? 7 years? Oh lord, I need to speed this up somehow. I know, I'll play too many games until I'm overwhelmed by how many I've beaten and I don't know which one to make a video on. Or maybe I can focus and pick 5 games I want to play and they will be the 5 games I definitely make a video on each month. Uh, except I didn't beat any of those 5 games and I abandoned them all. Uh, but I did pick 50 new ones. Yeah, 50. 50 games. I'm gonna focus. So today we're playing Croc 2, as you can see from the title of the video, unless you can't see it, in which case I'm very sorry because the pretty colours are the only entertaining thing about my videos. I'm not a funny person alright, I've come to terms with it and, and it's, it's eating me, me up, up inside. inside. My soul is dead. Just like the Croc series. So I beat Croc Legend of the Gobos on this very channel. Look I know I said Gobos and I'm very sorry about that, I won't do it again, please don't kill me. It was game number 10, but you probably don't remember that as it was in a catch-up video that nobody liked or watched. Man, I'm being really tough on myself today, when I really should be tough on Croc and his stupid backpack, the STUPID NERD! Croc, Legend of the Gobbos is extremely nostalgic to me. I kinda love it despite it being pretty damn flawed. The controls are terrible for a platformer, the collection aspect is lame, but I actually really love everything else about it. I love the level design, the graphics and art style are great, the soundtrack is absolutely banging and the game is just damn fun. It has its flaws but I think if they were improved upon you could have a great classic platformer on your hands. If only it got a sequel where they could fix all of these problems. Kapow! Croc 2 comes blasting onto the PlayStation with all its fancy improvements and secured its place as one of the greatest games ever. Right? Oh wait, no, I hopped into the alternate reality of Supreme Platformers again. Why must the real world suck so much? There's a reason not many people talk about Croc 2. He's not really that great. Like I said, all they had to do was improve two things, the controls and the collection aspect, and I personally would have considered it great. So let's get into it and see exactly what they did to my super sexy scaly boy. The game starts with Dr. Gobbo fixing his plane and taking a stroll before he is violently mugged and spends four years recovering from his injuries. Oh wait, no, no, someone who really needs to close that alternate reality gate. He actually stumbles across the Dantinis who have pulled Baron Dante back from the depths of hell. That's literally what is happening in this children's game. Cool. Or not, because I imagine hell is pretty damn warm actually. Cut to cheerful happy beach time. Starting a new game shows us Croc finding a bottle washed up on the beach which contains a message from... someone? I have no idea what you are saying. Well, looks like Croc is going to a different island because he got a message from someone. <coughs> okay, I mean, do we really need a story anyway? At least I haven't gone down the whole route of Dante has stolen all the gobbos again. Oh no, Croc, what will you do? But maybe that's to the game's detriment. We'll get to that. Right, let's begin with Banjo-Kazooie talking? Yeah, this game has a lot more talking. A lot more irritating talking. Just shut up please, Lord! We get given a pair of binoculars and apparently Croc is 50 friggin' foot tall. What the hell is this? Let's tank control our way out. Oh my. It got rid of the tank controls. That's an improvement, right? Well, kinda? It controls pretty well for the most part. The jumping still feels a little stiff though, and don't get me started on the bloody swinging mechanics. So an improvement right out the gate. Good, but as you'll notice, we're no longer on a world map. We have a hub world where we can actually choose a level to play. Cool, right? More choice is always good. Well, I kind of prefer the old way. The hub world here is mostly empty with like one thing to do in each of them, which involves exploring the whole damn thing to collect something, or jumping on a trampoline. Thrilling. 
and the draw distance is lower than my self-esteem. Plus, there is a shop to buy things in which you'll have to backtrack to across the hub world just to bloody buy jelly from. Great! Aloha, aloha! Um, is, it, is that okay? I, I, I've got to leave. I've got to go. I've got to go. <laughs> But that's not the worst of it. A shop requires money to buy things. So poor old Croc has to earn his way in the local strip club until he can afford that little robot gobo which we will not ask what he is doing with. <coughs> okay, really, the gems from the last game are in this. But now they are a currency. Each level has 100 and they're useless. I mean, they were pretty useless in the first game, but now they're even more useless. You can literally buy different jellies which bounce you up to areas or a clockwork gobo which you control in another area of the level. So how do we know which ones we need? You don't. You have to play the whole damn level to see what you need. Collecting gems as you go so you can then buy the damn items, then go back to the level replaying the whole thing to use the items which get you the five coloured gems which you have to collect all in one go. Collecting these unlocks a bonus level where you can retrieve the golden gobbo. Getting all the golden gobbos in a world unlocks a secret level where you can find a puzzle piece. What do the puzzle pieces do? I asked you a question, because I have no idea. I did not collect all the golden gobbers because screw this game and its stupid life system. You have three hearts, which you can get more of, but if you get hit, it takes a heart away. You fall down a pit or bounce on lava too much though, you'll lose a heart and get teleported back to the last checkpoint, which there are barely any of, so you'll most likely be back at the beginning of the level. If you get to zero hearts, it's game over. You must start the level all over again. So the bloody checkpoints are practically useless as they'll only ever work if you fall down a hole or into lava. But only if you don't hit zero hearts. I hate it, it's frustrating as hell. So we no longer collect gobbos. There is a total count for gems in the level, but it doesn't matter as they just respawn if you replay a level. They're just a stupid currency. <sighs> I mean, it's not like another game has ever made the gems useless. The levels are really... random? You don't just jump through and collect things. I mean, we already discussed there's nothing worthwhile to collect. You rescue a bird. Find five lost treasure chests in a mineshaft where if you miss a bloody gem you have to redo the slowest minecart section and you can't see the friggin' gems as the draw distance sucks and you're in a tight confined space where gems are hidden round corners and it's the most infuriating thing in the world but that doesn't even compare to the stupid ropes you have to swing on where I have no idea where you're meant to press jump and if you even have to hold the button or not and I just fall and start at a bloody beginning and this sucks! Let's have a boat race! Isn't this the most thrilling thing you've ever seen? Anyway, the levels aren't great, they're just frustrating, but I use my handy guide to see what jellies I need before I play the damn things and collect every single colour gem. Collecting all the golden gobbos is like the highlight of my life. I had to replay that stupid minecart level 50,000 times till I got that one. So you unlock this world's secret level, which is a mineshaft. <laughs> oh no. Let's just get the boss and move on. The boss has a little level before it, which is classic croc. I'm cool with that. Come on. The first boss is an octopus. We grab explosives, jump across moving barrels and blow the hell out of it. Yay! Death to the ocean! Nice, we're done. W wait, we're not done? There's another boss? What? Maybe I missed something as I accidentally skipped the cutscene, but now we gotta raid a pirate ship and kill Cannonball Pete? Ugh! When will my suffering end? Finally, we're on to Snowy Land. Yeah, the worlds are kind of themed like the original Croc. I just feel there are a lot less actual platforming levels and more nonsense. Apparently Croc is looking for his parents? Okay, sure, that must be who the letter was from. But forget about this guy hanging in Baron Dante's lair. We don't care about him. So this first snowy level is where I just straight up gave up collecting the colour gems. I just do not care for it. There are stupid jumps and holes and infuriating ropes that just do not work and I have to repeat the whole level to even get to this part and I just screw it up each time and because it's the golden gobbo section you literally only get one shot and you're kicked out. I don't get to try again to work out what the hell I'm doing wrong. No, I have to redo the whole bloody thing. Well forget that. Screw you croc with your weak pathetic arms. You probably couldn't even put the puzzle together if you did collect it. Let's just get through this now. I'm done. We have to save a runaway train, which I played the whole damn level. And just because in the last room I wanted to see if there was anything to collect and I didn't hit the lever right away, I failed. I failed and have to do the whole level all over again. Wait, wait what? They're multiplying again? Oh, god damn it.
I retry the swing and fail. We have to carry bombs for a maze before they explode. I walk right off a moving platform that you constantly have to walk on for it to move. And Croc just straight up killed himself. And I got game over. We have to roll around on a snowman's head to finish making the snowman. It's kind of cool. Like a snowman. I died. <laughs> we feed a fish ice cubes to kill it. Cool. We glide very gracefully on a hand glider through a lava canyon, saving gobbos and collecting all the colour gems before getting the golden gobbo. We chuck ice cubes at a lava man to kill him. Now we're on to the next world. Yay, I don't want to die even a little bit. Right, so I know I'm zooming through this now, but there is nothing else to it. Stiff jumping, boring, tedious and frustrating levels, terrible collection, it just kind of sucks. And I'm disappointed. Very disappointed in you, croc son. We're in the jungle world now, but it's just more of the same. I get mauled by dinosaurs and cavemen, fly off terrible minecarts to my hot lava death, race a boring car which is just a boring boat with wheels, fight a giant venus flytrap that doesn't get hurt by the rocks you throw at it but by the gobbos you collect which fly out of its mouth after you chuck a rock into its mouth while dodging his vines. What? what? I died. Touch a baby elephant! Become firefighter and put out burning gobbos. Oh no! Slow moving mechanical t-rex which is weak to water. How exciting. I get hit every bloody time I try to hurt him. Mm. Now we're in the Aztec world. I'm very sorry, I apologise to any Incas out there watching right now. Which clearly means only one thing. It's babysitting time where we must return all the babies to the playpen. What? Now I'll tediously climb a waterfall while you tediously splash around and get spat on by dirty frogs. I died. I did a thing. <laughs> No word of a lie, when I was younger I went in a door in the first world and just ended up in this world without playing any of the rest of the game. If only I was that lucky today. So after two amazing levels we're flying a biplane and shooting a giant Baron Dante on a mountain. Join! So we're done! Yeah! Oh no. We now have a level to do. It can't be that bad, right? It's full of rubbish puzzles, terrible timed moving platforms, terrible jumping while escaping slime. Did, did, did one just drop on my head from nowhere and kill me? I'm not, I'm not even mad. Not even a little bit, no. We finally make our way through goo hell till we find goo man chew. Oh, he's gonna be real tough. He dead. We're done, right? Oh no, a final battle, damn it! I thought I shot you off a mountain! This is basically an escort mission. We have to protect the Doctor from the Shadow Demons while Baron Dante floats around shooting fireballs. The Doctor collects the coloured gems and puts them on the coloured parts of the floor? Sure? This makes Dante real upset. Ah! Good thing I nailed this first time and don't get killed by a shadow but right near the end. We finally put all the gems in and Dante really isn't happy. He gets sucked into a portal of some kind. Is that where the good versions of the cock games live? Take me there! We slap the doctor and he gives us a map. I wonder what is at the X? Oh look, it's our ugly parents who really didn't care about me all this time. They even replaced me. The gobbos are here too, I guess. How exciting. Oh god, why are you here? He'll be back. Yeah, right, tell that to Croc Free. Oh, he stole my breakfast. What will we ever do? I know, we'll never do what Pete says and collect any of the puzzle pieces, because I'm done, and we'll never play this game ever again. They even made the credit song weird. This game isn't great, and it makes me sad, as the first game had so much potential to be great. Oh well, I guess, only one thing left for Croc to do. Oh, I didn't really talk about the soundtrack. Oh. Yeah. 
god damn Croc 2, stink of poo, I don't know what to do Guess I'll finish this review, please subscribe and like too <laughs> eh, it's pretty good. Not as good as the first.